Rob's Child. Nothing I say is investment advice. Welcome to the show where we view financial markets through crystal ball gazing. JP Morgan once said, millionaires don't need astrologers, but billionaires do. And so we begin. Today is Saturday, April 13th, 2024. I'm doing a show today because I did not make one when uh, Thursday or Friday. And this video is to catch us up a little bit. I wanted to start by just going over some of this interesting data that came out over this week. So in a nutshell, what happened this week? Wednesday, we had CPI coming out pretty hot and the markets were like, uh oh, that means rates are going to stay higher for longer. And so markets went down. And Thursday, we flip flopped. PPI was cool. Apparently, companies aren't paying a little bit less for the stuff they're making. Mainly, what does that mean? It means they think they don't need to make as much stuff. And it caused uh, markets got excited at that because it means less inflation, maybe lower rates. So markets go up. And then Friday, we had bank interest earnings low from JP Morgan, you know, speak of the devil and um, a warning from Jamie Dimon uh, talking about the basically the credit risk you know when we have interest rates staying high you know like I've been saying all along the Fed is purposefully strangling the economy and he sees he sees a little choking coming up uh, apparently and I think I think his comments may have driven the most amount of fear uh, in markets, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, you know, it's funny to see things move around so much with CPI and PPI, and then we have these banks come out with their earnings and this warning, and uh, and things finally cracked. So that's uh, that's the most notable, interesting thing going on. Before we get there, I want to mention a CNBC headline. From Friday, the Dow tumbles 475 points. S&P 500 suffers worst day since January as inflation woes erupt. Is it from inflation? I mean, that was Wednesday's news. And then the PPI was cool and things went up. And then the, because of the bank interest and what Jamie Dimon says... And then it's about inflation? No, I don't think they have that right there. Let's look through some charts. So, on a weekly time frame, yes, it looks like the markets are pretty weak here. Look at the size. Each one of these candles represents a week of time, and a lot of investors will use this as a way of tracking markets. Now, as you can see, since really it looks like October of 2023, we have not seen a, we a weekly move that far down and that solid of a move down since really the bottom here, you know, of, of October. This is adding a lot of strength to bears. The bears are taking over. I think, you know, I, I had called a top when I thought there was a top and so far it looks like I've been right about that and it looks like it will continue I will continue to be right about that looking now onto a daily time frame of the S&P 500 yeah this is this is your classic lower high lower low lower high lower low this is this is in breakdown mode we are finally out of this crazy bullishness pattern that we had going on from the beginning of the year until uh, very recently, really the beginning of April, end of March, beginning of April. Now the real coup de grace here is HYT. I have been talking about this thing ever since I started doing this daily show on markets and I had been talking about like just being surprised over and over again about markets going up, going down. One day you have things looking like they're breaking down and the next day they look like they're going up and HYT just continued to not care at all about anything. They're like, nah, nothing's really going on. Friday was the kicker. This is a huge move down in high yield corporate. You know, I'll repeat, I've been talking about this 
ETF for a while and the implications of it. You know, this is risky money. This means th this is smart money invested in more risky things. So this is basically an alarm bell saying, you know what? Companies that are borrowing money for a pretty high yield, they have to now have a higher they need to borrow they need to actually pay more money now to borrow money. They have, their interest payments are going up because there's more risk for bankruptcy for smaller companies. This chart here is showing that investors are very nervous. Uh, you know, was it the bank earnings? Was it what giant? It, I think it's likely has a lot to do with what Jamie Dimon said. You know, he's he's an important big voice out there, the head of J.P. Morgan, and we haven't seen a big move like this. I mean, when's the last time? I don't even see the last time we've seen a move like this. This is like falling off of a cliff kind of a move here. Um, you know, and after consolidating for so long, the, the longer you go sideways, by the way, in any chart pattern, usually the bigger the break. And so I don't even think this is the end of the break here. I think this is going to continue breaking down and I think that the stocks will follow suit. Game over, folks. Bears are in control. Even the CNN Fear and Greed Index, we are borderline on fear. They're still, they're still saying this is neutral from Friday. And I had been saying I thought it was going to excel. I, I thought we were going to go straight from neutral to fear. Instead, we went to neutral recently, went back up to greed. Now we're right back into neutral. You know, along with HYT drop uh, breaking down here, this is just looking, it's, it looks like it's going to be a bloodbath. Moving on to uh, DYX, I wanted to take a look at the dollar. This is the value of the dollar compared to other currencies. You know, I love it. You know, that inflation from CNBC. Yeah, everybody's worried about inflation. And so the dollar goes up in value? No. No, CNBC. Maybe I should uh, start writing for them. I don't know. The dollar here is showing strength. It wants to go up. It looks, this is a pattern, you know, when things are trending up, they tend to keep going up. And so we could see a pretty big run up continuing in the dollar from here. Now, uh, a lot of exciting things, you know, I, it's too bad I uh, couldn't uh, do a video and follow more charts over the past two days because they were pretty eventful days. Moving on, we're going to take a look at gold real quick. Gold, wow. You know, we look at, this is, I believe, yeah, this is a three hour chart that I have up. For three hours, we went, within one three hour time frame, we went from about 2400 gold to uh, 2430, I guess. We peaked out there before dropping all the way down to 3344 in gold. You know, movements that big in gold, I mean, they're, they're pretty rare. You know, this, uh, I, I have been, by the way, talking about uh, the, the fact that I don't think gold is going to hold up in this environment. When people need to sell stuff for liquidity, gold, you know, there's, there's not a lot of things that retain, that can retain value because a part of it is forced selling. You have certain investors that have these things that, owe money and the risk is going up, the interest rates are going up, and they turn into forced sellers, and some forced sellers force more forced selling, and it can turn into kind of a spiral effect pretty quickly. Adding to the idea that this was a run for safety on Friday, we did have TLT increase in value, which means you know people were buying treasuries um, on Friday. You know, it wasn't a huge move. People aren't massively moving into treasuries, not yet. I believe smart money, including my own money, is moving into treasuries at the right time here. And um, we'll, but we'll see. It'll be very interesting to see where things go from here in uh, in treasuries, especially the longer duration. 
other notable charts, uh, less important, but some very interesting moves. This is Junior Silver Miners, just something I like to really keep track of. It's For me, it's basically an easy way of getting leverage on silver. If you think the price of silver is going to go up, the value of the juniors automatically kind of follows it. And wow, <laughs> silver got so excited and then, uh, you know, we opened so high and dropped so low. This the size of this red candle is uh, formidable. Look at look back in this chart. We haven't seen something like this, like again. Like when is the last time we've seen a candle by itself that large? It's not even anywhere on this chart. That was uh, that was very interesting. I have a feeling uh, a lot of smart money is uh, dumping here, while retail might be seeing this as a buy the dip opportunity. I do not see this as a buy that dip opportunity. Moving on, I just wanted to share a few more charts. This is the Brazilian ETF, one that I've been talking about uh, for a while, how you have this trend line that goes back to 2010, 2011 that we've been bumping on. We finally broke out very recently and we've been retesting it. Uh, just yesterday, on Friday, we retested it again. I do see this as a very opportune time to be putting some capital into this market even though you know even though I see a lot of other markets potentially collapsing here you know as I've said before you know investing outside of the United States I think can give you a little bit of protection they have different interest rates they have different things going on in their economies they're in a different place and um, you know We'll see how it pans out. It'll be very interesting if, if this line gets broken to the downside as far as uh, chart patterns go. But we will we'll see how, have to see how that happens. Last two charts, uh, wanted to mention wood. I've been talking about wood for a while. Sorry, I can't get this uh, chart to behave. By the way, if you ever want to, if if it's a if the new Yahoo finance charts are driving you nuts, just put C A dot in front of whatever you have, because the Cana they haven't updated the Canadian website for whatever reason. So um, that's an easy way to fix that problem. Yahoo Finance is being such a nightmare lately. But anyway, I have been talking about uh, seeing wood curling over here and breaking down. This is another leading indicator. Uh, showing weakness and a lot of times uh, markets can you know other markets can follow a uh, market like wood and um, yeah and so it's it's playing out as I've been thinking it would and no pun intended the stars are all aligning and I see chaos and fear ahead it's very it's becoming more and more clear, especially after Friday, that we are now in bear mode. I see the markets going down from here. Yeah. The last nail in the coffin, which is yet to be seen, we don't have the last nail yet, is actually in the queues. I am still short the queues. And um, right now my short is breaking even around around this price I think I'm I'm a little bit uh, up actually right now but you know we are still I've been talking about uh, last week's Thursday giant red candle in the queues and how you know we might break out one way or the other I wrote in a post in the community tab about how I found it fascinating how on Thursday we hit the top of this candle the uh, the high of the day was the same exact price to the penny of the opening of last Thursday's giant red candle. And so pe people hit that and they ran for the hills. Uh, I mean, not for the hills, only down a little bit. You know, it took till Friday before we started exploring the bottom side of this candle. But we haven't actually broken out of this little range yet here on the queues. I fully expect this to break down. And once we get below this line, for me, that's the last nail in the coffin of this market rally that has been happening you know that really started before the beginning of the year and yeah and so I'm happy to be sitting on treasuries and still five percent short on the queues and we'll see how that goes and yeah 
that's all I wanted to talk, to talk about today. Just to reiterate, the most important thing that I see going on is this HYT. This is this is smart money. These are you know these assets represent money that is borrowed for businesses that have to pay high percentage interest on their debt or their prefer their preferred shares. Some preferred shares are uh, guaranteed, basically. It's a rare thing. I don't need to dive into it. Um, the point is, is that smart, big money, you know, the bond market's much bigger than the stock market. Big, smart money is fearful here. We finally are breaking down. This is huge. This is not like a little, you know, a little one-time, one-off event. This is, this, this kind of movement in HYT to me is a big deal. And I think it spells out uh, with a lot of surety that the bears are in control. And that's all I have for you for today's show. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching. Rob's Child.